Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. You know how certain dogs get a bad rap? Yes. Like what, for instance? Like bully breeds of all varieties. Pit bulls. The pit bulls, Staffordshire Terriers, anything that looks like a pit bull. Anything that's Dolmans, large and muscular, pretty much. German Shepherds. Yeah. But bad rap. you know how we've always said that the reality is that people are assholes? it's the people that train the dogs to be that way that are the problem? Yeah. Well, now we have proof of that. Well, we had proof before, but now we have, like, first-hand examples. Definitive first-hand proof. Um, so there's a massive dick that lives in our building. And yes, I'm being blunt. Because I'm angry. When my cat friend is afraid for his life, I'm angry. And you he... need to explain what happened. And he was encouraging his... I don't know. Staffordshire Terrier. Something like is. that. Puppy to lunge at my fluffy orange cat friend. Yeah, Mr. Fluffy Orange. Now, before you get on, before anybody gets on there, well, I don't really like cats. There's a stray cat living in the building. It's a nuisance tirade. This cat is afraid of everything. He doesn't bother anyone. Yeah. He is not that annoying stray cat that, like, shits in your flowers. He's, Let's be real. He's, he's a nice kitty. So, this whole shenanigan, oh, it just makes me angry. Like, it makes me have those scenarios in my head where I, like, have arguments with people in my brain that I'll never have out loud. Yeah. That's it's, it. well, and it's, it comes down to this. First of all, we can go all the way back. When you rent an apartment, it's few and far between that will take dog and cat or even dog at all right most of them take like cat but maximum of one and like no dog or dog under certain weight and it's because of people like this who let their dog take a crap wherever they feel like it and don't clean up have have their have their dog attack a stray cat you you want to know why pit bulls and that breed turn out nasty it's because their owners encourage them to be aggressive and i I feel like okay i'm gonna be really blunt you know how people talk about the guys with the big raised trucks yes and they say that they do that because they're wanting to compensate for something yeah well it's almost like the owners of these big beefy dogs know they can't really kick anyone's ass so they're going to use their dog and teach it to kick people's ass. Well, dear guy in our building who's letting his big ass dog try to attack my cat. Don't. If you uh, if I catch this happening, there's going to be an issue. We well, you know what we do, right? It's simple. Buena Park Police. Yes. And yelly screaminess because I mean, I'm you going saw, to be mad. You saw, I showed you the... Instagram model who was beating on her dog, right? It was just yeah. a puppy. Okay, here's the sad part about it. If you've actually, have you watched the video? I've never watched the okay. video, sorry. The video is awful. And then the cute little puppy dog, after she completely mistreats it, loyally just follows her along with her. Because it oh. can't understand why, I mean, come on, think about it. Look at Yogi. Look at Yogi. Yogi is a sensitive little snowflake. And... <laughs> And really if either of us raises our voice for anything, if there's a sports game on and I go, woo, yeah. he starts shivering. Yeah. Okay. And he thinks you're mad at him. But what does he do? Does he stay away from you forever? Or does he come out and try to like kiss up to you? He tries to kiss up to you like immediately. Because he wants the attention that you give him. He wants the love. Right. And he's he needs willing it. to, he, yeah, and he's willing to accept that fear that happens in order to get the love. Right. It's like he's so frightened that he's shaking. Mm-hmm. 
But yet he's still willing to look past that. That's amazing to me. Like that's loyalty right that's there. Dog thing. And if people were that loyal, oh my gosh. I know. Can you imagine what the world would be like if people actually were that loyal? <clears throat> well, and the sad thing is, when you do get someone in your life who's super loyal like that, it takes a while before you believe it. Well, and the other sad thing is that when certain people, probably people like this Instagram model you're talking about, become friends with those people, they abuse them and mistreat them until they can't be that person anymore. Well, it's like the crazy, the game that Heidi, Frosty, and Frankie used to play where they would send out the Playboy model and try to flirt with guys to see if they would cheat or not. Yeah. And then she gets caught at the gym fat shaming some woman. At the gym, man. Yep. I mean, not that it's okay to fat shame anyone anywhere, but it's kind of like using the word, you know, goddamn at church. It just doesn't seem right. Right. It's and just in the like words a... of your mom, we would burst into flames if we did that. <laughs> it adds an extra layer of rude to the already rude thing. Yeah, and and, and she's in a gym trying to do better. So, okay, it's like, it's like that. But see, here's the thing, okay? Do you remember when we first met? What did I tell you about myself? That you're an extremely loyal person. And what do you think after all this time? Do you think that's true? Yes. The audience pretty much has determined this to be a yes. Pretty much <laughs> to everybody. You have a limit. Yes, if you cross the boundaries, the wrong boundary anyway, then I'm done. Right. But I'm even loyal to that. When I'm done, I'm done. You, your boundaries are the same place for everyone. You don't you don't have a bingo. And I guess that's why anytime we've ever talked about Facebook groups or whatever, I always say I don't understand why people have to be fascists about it. Just set a set of rules, and you can make them as strict as you want. You could make the if you you really could make it so that on Mondays the only thing you're allowed to talk about is the weather, and on Tuesdays the only thing you can talk about is the traffic, etc. And as long as you enforce those rules for everybody, nobody's gonna complain. That's honestly one thing that I will give the Huntington Beach community group manager person credit for his rules they are fascist like fascist fascist but he who break his rules is an equal opportunity asshole to everyone yeah he doesn't seem to favor nope. any group of people and that's why everybody hates his guts yep. um i only dislike him because he attacked me for no reason but i don't even know him and i've watched some of his videos and he has some pretty i don't know bizarre ideas about things like he's right. definitely a conspiracy theorist type guy but he doesn't seem like a horrible dude i've heard some horrible things about him but again that's just i don't know him i don't know i have respect i i don't like some of the things i've seen him do to other people that's that is just is what it is but i feel like he gets a little bit of respect back from me for being consistent well but like the buena park community lady yes i like her too she was smart enough. I mean, I give her lots of credit. She was smart enough to turn on comment moderation on April Fool's Day because she didn't want to have to deal with the potential drama that would come out of people playing April Fool's jokes. And especially, think about this. There is that group in society that likes to strike a nerve with the extra religious people. Yeah. And you know somebody would have come up with some lame ass joke that insulted religious people. Did she turn the post moderation back she turned off? Turned it after? back off. Yep, you can post now right away. It was all about April Fool's Day, but but she made it a point of not just doing it, but telling. She everybody. told everybody, "I'm doing this." Yeah, I honestly think I honestly think that the other group that we've talked about a couple of times. Maybe the way to solve a lot of her problems would be to turn on that post moderation as well. Because yeah, she... but then we're you know already you hear about what a full time job it is. Can you only imagine if post moderation was turned on? Yeah, I think it's annoying when you're in a group and post moderation is turned on. The best way is what the We Are Craft Vapors did. Those guys had like. He had a ratio for like every hundred users, mm -hmm. he would add four moderators. 
And that way, if something got posted, he was also very cognizant about having those four moderators be spread out across time zones. Yeah. So he didn't like get four people that lived in Los Angeles to all moderate. And it was great because, you know, you'd sometimes you'd run into some post and you'd be like, whoa, but then it was gone. They took care of it. And the point being, I saw it before they did. But most of the time, I didn't see many of those, yet I heard about them. So I know they were there, and their moderator team did their job. And I think that is the best way to handle a group, is to have enough people to moderate the group properly. Then you can't whine about how much work it is for you. Some of the some of the more sensitive issue groups that I'm in on Facebook have like 50,000, 100,000 plus members in them. And they do something very similar. They have a, um, the two big, biggest ones, they have an application form in their notes, just a Google Sheet. You need to put in, like, what groups you've moderated before, why you're interested in doing right. it. And I then, do this with the libertarian group. Yeah, and then they make you pick your time zone. And I'm then, still a moderator in that group. I know. When they, um, when they um, have an opening for a moderator, they message a couple of people off the list. Yeah. And they give you like a trial run, like you get a week. Sure. And if you're a lunatic, they just take you off the list and you can never apply again. Well, and what the craft vapors people would do is for one thing, the rules would get enforced very fairly mm-hmm. because it was multiple people enforcing the rules. And so they really don't have much choice but to enforce the rules fairly because there's a million other people to say, you're not being fair. And they're not friends. Right. And then the next thing, what he would do is he would, if a moderator overstepped their boundaries, he had his set of rules. But if the moderator like overstepped those boundaries and did something that was outside of the rules, he would tell them, this is your only warning. I reversed your decision, and this is your only warning. He'd tell them publicly, this is your only warning. If it happens again, that you're losing moderator status. Yeah. And to people who are really into the vaping industry and all that stuff, it was cool for them because they got to see all these posts that they wouldn't normally see. And I secretly think that he was giving... I, I, he's such a nice guy that I think he was giving kickbacks to people like, you know, here, since you moderate, I'll give you your subscription box for free. Because too many people clamored to get a moderator spot. And it had that's what it had to be. And that's smart, though, because you're developing some customer loyalty, and then they talk to other people about it. But then at the same time, you're getting your damn group moderated. And that group was huge. The one, the one group that I'm in, they had an app, They put it on application for moderators, and in this like twenty-ish thousand person group, they got over a thousand moderator applications. Five percent makes sense. So that's crazy. It's crazy to think there's that many people who are actually active and interested in being a moderator because it's kind right. of like I'll tell you, for me. There's a couple of really, like, I think during a non-campaign-ish time period where I had some extra time, even a little bit at night, Yeah. I think moderating that libertarian group would be a blast for me, because you know I love political discussions, so I think it would be a blast for me. Um, and what's good about it is it forces me to listen to the discussion without saying much, because they tell you they don't really want us interfering with the discussion unless something's right. gone south. Right. So it kind of forces you to like maintain some structure and boundaries around your discussions. That's a page though, not a group. Yeah. So you, if you wanted to be part of the discussion, could be part of the discussion as yourself. Yes, I could. Which is kind of neat. But it's interesting because I learn a lot. But right now it's like some days it's seventy percent of my notifications come from that group. They're That's a busy, they're a busy, busy page. Because there was not a lot of point in me being there. And the notifications were annoying the crap out of me. So, the guy with the dog. Guy with the dog. People who do stupid things. Well, where did we go today? We went to... A super ghetto junior high school for a fabulous junior high track meet. Where did you go today? Because I know where that's where I went. I also went to a track of the meet. And what happened at the track meet? Something interesting happened at the track meet. 
Well, there was a lot of something interesting that, interesting that happened at the track meet. My personal favorite moment was a girl who was doing the hurdles, and she ran up to the hurdle, stopped, hopped over, and then started running again to the next hurdle, stopped, hopped over. Yeah. That was pretty fabulous. And then there was the near tragedy as the uh, kid was doing a nice job jumping over the hurdles, the first one, and he gets to the second one, and like his toe catches just on the top. And he falls in his lane. Superman style. Arms out, flat yeah. on his stomach. Yeah, in, in his lane. And the lane to his right, the guy jumps over the hurdle, but he's so out of control that he heads into the other guy's lane, and he almost spikes him. Because let's, let's keep in mind that they wear metal spikes on their shoes for track meets. Yeah. So he almost stepped on his head. It was almost a tragedy. There was almost blood. That would really freaking hurt. Then there was the kid that was leading in the 400 and had to pull up lame because he uh, had a cramp. Then he ended up laying on the grass at the side of the track. Yeah. So that was pretty awful. Thank you, Snickers friend. Had Snickers pipes up in the background. And then let's take a minute and realize that Mitchell kicked some serious butt on his mile today. Yes, personal record. Five minutes and 42 seconds. Yep. Pretty amazing. A plus. Go, Mitch, go. I was impressed. So, that was our day. We were busy as usual. Always. Always. Yes. Yogi had a bath. Now he's dead. He smells so much better. My gosh. He kind of smelled like... Ripe. Dog pee and gross farts earlier, and now he smells like um, oatmeal and honey. So yeah. it's a vast improvement. I'll give you that. Cute. I didn't realize you used the new shampoo until you told me. That's good. I don't like the other shampoo. I'm glad you used it. Mm-hmm. So, anything else to add to the uh, structure like you did last time? No, but I think, I do think that our. Lovely viewer, listeners, not viewers, you're not looking at us, which is probably a good thing. Anyway, our lovely listeners should take a (laughs) minute and send us an email about their day, because I'd like to know how your day was. Info at yogispodcastnetwork.com And as always, send us an email about your day, entry into our 100th episode contest. Only, what, 19 more episodes to go? Yep. Or 18. 19. I might have to put a cap on how many entries you can have. Better hurry. Better hurry. Hey, Daniel, how come I haven't gotten an entry from you? Nah. Calling you out. All right, well, anything else you want to add? No, I think that's actually everything this time. Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mike, and I truly hope you enjoyed the show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher so as to never miss an episode. If, by chance, you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to yogispodcastnetwork.com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.